name. Uh, my job this morning is to welcome you at the welcoming address. We are honored to have a very distinguished scholar uh, with a great deal of expertise on the subject globalization of war. Uh, we are honored to have distinguished participants uh, His Excellency, the High Commissioner of Pakistan, our uh, longtime friend and supporter, Dr. Chandra Muzaffa, uh, Tansri Johar, uh, and our brothers from the Embassy of Iran, uh, Professor Michael Shudovsky. Uh, and our distinguished participants, uh, welcome to IIS Malaysia. Uh, some of you may be new to this institute, but we are a public forum here. We have free, frequent events, seminars, public lectures, and I'm del delighted to be hosting uh, someone of the, the, the kind of uh, expertise and distinction <coughs> that I'm looking forward to uh, to his um, insights. Uh, when globalization came, it came with a great deal of promises. Uh, easier access to uh, to goods and services and trade across the borders and uh, uh, technology and science, many of those promises have not materialized. And it has itself, globalization has proven in many ways an instrument in the hands of the powerful. Uh, we have seen that inequalities have increased. And the tension levels in the world is at its highest, probably. Uh, and uh, now the globalization has established a context. Everything of major proportion that concerns the major <coughs> actor is in all, almost automatically globalized. Uh, we have seen the globalization of global financial crises, for example. Uh, we have uh, now seen globalization of trade and war and tariffs, starting between a few major actors, but it, its effects uh, are really uh, wide-ranging and of concern to probably it will affect uh, the disadvantaged countries even more. Uh, then we have, of course, uh, the crisis, climate crisis, which is global by nature anyway, but not the kind of the uh, aspects, the kind of industrial abuses and carbon emissions and so on. The major actors are the major culprits, but they are um, not really, um, not even acknowledging. And it is a global crisis. We are seeing the kind of uh, the changes, even in the title, U.S. NATO threats directly against Russia and China. You see that Russia and America has spoken some different languages, even uh, very recently. Uh, we are uh, seeing globalization of, uh, of war in so many ways. If, since the 9-11, like the U.S. and its allies, has attacked 13 Muslim countries. And in each case, it has left uh, major crises, poverty, degradation, and they make the crisis, but they don't worry about how to, uh, to now uh, 
to find uh, reasonable solutions to what they are doing. So they are exporting, they are keeping now by the way of this uh, unilateralism and uh, trade protectionism and all of that, they are changing uh, the course of globalization, the keeping the benefits but exporting the evil effects. This is what we are in reality experiencing. And uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, the world is perhaps the tension level have been high, have been uh, raising and raising higher and higher to the extent that uh, nowadays the news you hear is all of conflict, attacks, migration has become a global crash crisis, and. Uh, uh, they are, there are many, many problems that are created by these major actors and yet they are finding ways to alienate themselves and to inflict. And this is the kind of scenario that instead of uh, uh, seeing the same people uh, redoubling their efforts to reduce tension and reduce war, be agents of peace, uh, we are unfortunately not living that experience. But without pretending that I am an expert on globalization, I look forward to an engaging and fruitful discussion. Thank you. Wassalam. Assalamu alaikum.